This video is for business leaders who want to remain successful long term rather than fail through creative destruction. Watch to the end of this video for bonus material on how to maintain, uh, remain consistent in the face of obstacles and in inevitable disruptions. And for a recommended video on how to how to produce and maintain progress rather than perfection. I'll be honest. Sometimes I regret making the commitment to do daily videos for this entire year. While I've succeeded, including today, 246 days in a row, I am sometimes filled honestly with kind of a sense of dread that today might be the day the world learns my secret that I can't really do this. It's maybe irrational, but it's it's something that I sometimes feel is like, you know, I've done so many of these in a row. Maybe today's the day I crash and burn. And yet, logically, I know, obviously, if I can go this far, I can go all the way, shy of medical or other inevitable emergencies beyond my control. So what I usually do then is I just simply, simply when I get my words right, uh, though not always easily move my focus away from that to the task at hand and start my daily work on creating another video. And to date, it has worked every single time. So my active public and effortful commitment, which is the type Robert Cialdini says is the most likely we are to keep, is one of the main things that keeps me going through these challenging days because I've literally told the world and everybody I know that I will do one of these videos every day. It gives you very little wiggle room. I'm not really worried about public opinion, but I've made the commitment and I have every reason and motivation and intention to stick to it and have been doing well so far. So it's also the topic for today's video because today's video is actually named, I'm going to jump back to the name here, and that is Create Consistently or Fail Through Creative Destruction. Now, if you're not familiar with Creative Destruction, I can't remember the guy's first name, but his name was Schumpeter. He was an economist and demonstrated that as new technologies and innovations happen, other ones are displaced or destroyed. And the classic example is how car, uh, when automobiles took over for uh, horse-drawn carriages and the fact that all the related industries to horse-drawn carriages were destroyed or displaced and replaced by things that now supported um, automo automobiles rather than horses. So in Roy Baumeister and John Turney's book, Willpower, they spoke uh, about Raymond Chandler. He's a famous and prolific author who had an effective strategy for creative consistency. And that is every morning, he set aside four hours a day for writing or nothing else. That is, he set aside the time and he was only allowed to write during that four hours, and he was not allowed to do anything else that was in any way productive or rewarding. He could do something extremely boring, or he could write. It's actually a very clever way. This was a way to sort of avoid procrastination, is to have only one alternative to doing nothing, um, rather than giving people, giving himself um, something else to do, which is what people often do and they procrastinate. They'll do every difficult thing in the world except the one thing they should be doing that they're trying to avoid. This is a great uh, strategy to get around that. So you can do the same thing by setting aside a specific amount of time at the beginning of your day to do one specific creative thing. In my case, of course, it's these videos. So it might be something else like uh, solo brainstorming, many, many variations of your consulting services uh, for, uh, uh, or as many services as you can think of for the first hour of your day or the first hour that you're productive. Or an alternative, uh, and what I do, I've already done this. 
post one complete video on a topic related to, as I call it, neurocognitive leadership every single day. Bottom line is to do something every day. Now you can count it by numbers of things or period of time. It depends on which works best for you and which fits best with your lifestyle and your availability and your control over your schedule. So what's really important is that you have a way to measure it. One video, the number of tasks completed or a specified time are all completely valid ways to do this. The thing that still amazes me, excuse me, the thing that still amazes me is that even if I don't know what the heck my video will be about when I start writing the script outline, which is the first thing I do almost every day. By the end of writing the script line, I have something that provides actionable solutions or immediate solutions uh, to my audience. Almost every time I start, I don't actually know what my bonus material is going to be or what my recommended video is going to be until after most of the outline is complete. That's because as I write down to the uh, bonus material, I am going through my thoughts. All I have in my head in most cases is just the theme. And as I write, that is the material that then leads naturally to the bonus material. I don't know exactly what words I'm gonna use, until I write them. I know the gist, but I don't know the exact words. And once I've written those words, then I know what the bonus material is going to be about. Or I, I logically extend or go deeper on the main theme of what I've written and spoke about to that point. So I essentially start by leaving the text blank and then go back and fill those in. So uh, watch to the end of this video for bonus material on and then I just leave a blank line. And the same for the video. And then I look up the video. Uh, so essentially what I do is I write to the point um, uh, that defines the bonus materials. If I already described, then I usually search through my own videos for a video that's closely related or a natural extension of everything I've spoken about or everything I've written about in the outline because I have a lot of videos and I repeat the same themes from different angles and for different purposes, I can often do that. If I can't find one, I use the best one I can find online from other people, um, usually based on something that, some, uh, that comes from either the authors of, of the many books I've listened to or read or material related to it. And then lastly, the same theme that I've already in this point uh, have in my head, that is a good video. That is, it's usually short, shorter than my own, and I watch it. And if I'm not satisfied with the quality or the validity of the information, I simply won't include it. So it's worked for 246 days in a row, uh, because not because I'm special in any way about what I do in terms of my creative consistency. I am creative, but 246 days in a row is more than just having some creativity. And I assure you, you can do it too using the same principles I do. Uh, essentially, it's because our brains are amazingly adaptive. That is, when you get in the habit of doing something, but also you practice doing something, you tend to get better as long as you practice correctly. So by making consistent creativity and innovations a must, that is, I must do this every day, rather than a should, our, brain tends, our brains tend to adapt and deliver on that commitment we've changed from a should to a must. Sometimes it's a struggle, but since I've made it a must, I then push myself towards the daily goal uh, to completion. And if you do the same, so if you push yourself, if you make a goal into a must, something you must do, doing it first thing in the day is a good strategy because you don't do anything else until it's completed. And then push through that daily goal until completion. What it does is it trains your brain to create consistently. 
you're saying, this is what we do. This is our routine. And your brain basically delivers it to you. So thank you for watching this far in the video. You've reached the bonus material. And the bonus material is that if for any reason you simply can't do your one must-do goal, summon your self-compassion. And also your personal responsibility to get back on the wagon the very next day. With 40 years of experimenting and practice, I assure you that this works. Uh, when I was young, I used to beat myself up over not going to the gym and getting that great body that I wanted. Um, and whenever I missed a single workout, I usually was pretty hard on myself and really did feel every single time like I had failed and let myself down. I'd essentially feel bad, bad about myself, feel like a failure and stop working out for a week or more and then go back and start again. I learned that essentially uh, feeling bad, beating yourself up is utterly useless and nothing works better than exercising that self-compassion to stay consistent or most important, mostly consistent. That is, I have been able to, by making it such a high priority, a must to do this many videos. At the same time, if I missed one tomorrow for reasons beyond my control, I wouldn't beat myself up. I would just be ready to do the next one the next day that I could. So if you miss a day on your creativity commitment or anything else, um, it doesn't really matter. If you have a me if it was a medical emergency or something completely beyond your control, there's nothing to forgive yourself about. Just let it go and do it again tomorrow. Do the activity, the commitment again tomorrow. If there even is a hint of choice, which I'll be honest with you, there almost always is. We can almost always do one thing that is a must-do thing, shy of what we've already talked about, is to take full responsibility. This happens to me quite often. Today, I should be going and doing my workout. It's fairly likely that I won't get to it in time, but it's not an excuse. I could go do it. But I'm concerned that if I go work out, it's going to keep me awake too late. And I have uh, working commitments tomorrow, which I must, must take priority. I don't love the idea that I have to do it, but it's already late enough that I have to choose between not getting enough sleep or getting enough exercise. And in this case, since I have those working commitments tomorrow, I think sleep and mental alertness take priority over missing a one day, which is not a big deal, knowing that I will get back onto it the following exercise day. That's all there is to it. So you forgive yourself immediately. You take responsibility like I just described. Forgive yourself immediately. It's like, I could have, but I didn't. Here's what I could do to prevent that from happening next time. And then start again immediately tomorrow or the next day that in my case, it's not tomorrow, but the following day is my regular routine. That's when I'll do it. And for bonus points, what you want to do is you want to reflect on th how, uh, how you can do things differently to prevent missing your consistent creativity or other commitment going forward. And the recommended video for today is called Progress Not Perfection. I will put the link right there and in the description. So if you enjoyed this video, please share it. This has been Crush It Club 246. Create consistently or fail through creative destruction. My name is Tim B. Green. Bye for now.